Good afternoon, everybody. It is my second video of the day. Um, I don't put them both out at the same time. But this one is um, it's still June 20... See, there I go again. It's still, it's still June 15th. Why am I thinking 25th? Why is my brain stuck on June 25th? I don't know. Anyhow, I'm going to go through... American Cozy again. I read some more last night. Now, we are going through a how to co how to make your house cozy and warm. And I am on different rooms of the house. So, yeah. So we're going to talk about various rooms throughout the house, how to make them cozy, how to make them cozy and warm and uncluttered. Excuse me while I adjust myself. The first room she started to talk about is hallways. Now she talks about the, the feng shui of the, the Chinese um, feng shui of how to make your hallway um, clo uh, um, cozy and free flowing. And Basically, she talks about how in um, oh, but where where are we going? In the Hugi way or Hagi way, Huga, not Hugi, Huga. Um, the entrance way serves the same purpose. Therefore, it should be devoid of clutter. Painted, um, painted in a light color and have clean walls and floors. This goes for all homes hallways. So not just your front front entrance way, which is like the focal point of entering your home, where the the energies of natural energies or energies of life, however you want to put it, enter the home. This includes people who enter your home. So you want people who are entering your home to feel invited, relaxed, and comfortable. Um, so basically she's saying, make sure, um, the hallway is well lit, whether it's your foyer, your mud room entrance point, uh, the hallways that go to different parts of your home need to be well lit, <clears throat> um, with attractive features, fixtures, excuse me. Many people spend energy choosing perfect lighting fixtures for the living room and bath bathrooms only to forget the hallway. And here's tips. <clears throat> Many hallways have chipped floorboards, baseboards, or peeling paint around doors. If this sounds familiar, spend a couple hours making repairs. Basically, you know, repainting the hall, repainting the walls, the um, cleaning up the chips, fixing any um, unsightly issues. Avoid over. <laughs> Hold on. Avoid over decorating hallways. Two facing walls lined with photos can create a cluttered effect. Lemon art to one side of the hallway, leaving the other side clean. Yeah, I understand that. Um, my one hallway, the only hallway that I have in my side of the house, I don't know what mom's side of the house really looks like because um, I don't really um, look at her halls. I go in there as little as possible due to... She likes to keep her area warm plus the smoke and, you know, I'm not going to go into there, into that area, to that realm of, of thought. Um, do not use runners or rugs in the hallway. These collect dirt, are a safety hazard, and make hallways look cramped or crowded. Um, bare floors are safer and easier to keep clean. Right now, my, my hallway has no rug. It used to. Um, Jerry's choice. For the last couple of weeks, the hallway has been bare because um, Jerry gets, you know, her walker gets caught up on the rug or makes it hard for her to, to move because the walker catches on the on the throw rug and drags it with her making it um difficult for her to walk and dangerous so 
Last couple of weeks, we've been dealing with no rug. And I tell you what, I love it. I love the fact that there's no hallway in that, uh, there's no rug in that hallway. Um, why? Well, it looks better. Um, it's easier to clean. And um, yeah, it's, nobody's tripping over it. Yeah, I've tripped over it a couple times. Um, the last one for the hallway is hanging coat pegs near a door is fine as long as the hallway is wide is a wide one coats and backpacks hanging on in a narrow corridor will constantly be knocked over by people as they squeeze by that's true um my little hallway out here my little foyer is just a square um eight inch by not even eight inch. I don't know how many inches by how many inches. It's a little square area. And granted, it looks a little bit more open because we have an archway that leads directly into the kitchen. Problem is it is, it is kind of narrow when you go to open that door. You have to, sometimes depending on how many people are trying to come through that door at the same time, they have to literally open up my door for this room to, to get everybody in. Um, it, it has a little coat closet, so that's not a big deal. What makes it look a little bit smaller to me is the fact that we have a little sewing table. Now, if the sewing table could keep declutter, you know, in other words, keep stuff off of it, um, unless it's like you're temporarily putting your purse there to take off your coat or something, um, it might look a little bit more inviting. That in fact, are, most of the rooms in, in this house are painted gray, and that includes that little area. So as soon as they walk in, it looks crowded and unsightly and just uninviting. Unlike my mud room entry, it's a little bit bigger because it has it's a narrow, it's narrow, but in the the in the narrow area is the big freezer, the washer and dryer, and a baker's rack. Now, if we can keep that area decluttered and clean and whatnot, um, it's a little bit brighter. It's a little bit more inviting. I literally feel like every time I have guests coming in through my main door, I have to turn on the light out there. So it's a little bit brighter and a little bit more inviting. I would love to take the time to repaint that, um, that area like a <coughs> neutral color or a, a bright color, like a sky blue or something of that nature. Um, unfortunately, I have to get the consent of the other two people living in this house, and so far, nobody cares. So, it's like, mm, okay, we'll, we'll, when we go to fix that room up, we'll talk about it more. Next room, living room, living room and family rooms. Um, I'm just going to read the whole passage and talk to you about it. In Western, in Western architecture... A living room, also called a lounge or sitting room, is a room in a residential house or apartment for relaxing and socializing. When I was growing up, we had both a family room where the family hung out on bean bags and watched television together, and a living room where my parents entertained visitors and were and where we children were not allowed. Regardless of what you have, this is important. This is an important room as often the centerpiece of the home. That's how it is in my house. I have just a living room. Um, so it is literally the centerpiece of the, the house. As a heavily used common room, your living room must be both comfortable and well kept. Here are a few ways you can, can meet this challenge. Don't over decorate. Decorate decorating eh. decorating for decorating's sake causes clutter. Mm, excuse me. Get rid of vacation souvenirs on bookshelves and various books that no one has read stacked on your end tables and so on. So basically she's saying if it's something that you don't use on a regular basis or if it's just souvenirs that can be placed in other rooms or kept in different lo in different spots or different areas. If it's a deck, basically if it's a dust collector or it's just, 
overly done, it's not necessary. You can get rid of that stuff. Now, I saying get rid of your souvenirs because obviously there's a reason for the souvenirs, but they don't have to be in the living room. Um, if they're photos. In fact, I'm going to read that here in a little bit. Um, let's just keep on reading. Now, get rid of a few more things. This room has more bodies in it at one... Yeah, in it at one time than any other room in your house. That alone will create a bit of clutter. If there is anything you can clear out, do it. So basically, if you entertain a lot of, of family, friends, guests, whatever, the, the living room is probably going to be the main room you're in. So the more people you have, the more cluttered it's going to feel. So the less clutter you have in your home before the bodies start coming in, um, the better it is. Opt for sleek. Ooh, yeah, opt for sleek. Heavy ornamented, heavy oriented furniture can look untidy in such a busy room. A sleek sofa or two with a few clean line chairs and maybe a bean bag plus a rug to lounge on give a large larger number of people comfort comfortable neat looking places to plant themselves while they enjoy one another's company so you don't want to have a, like a lot of heavy duty fancy dancy looking furniture you just need a couple of nice sleek comfortable couches with a couple of nice clean line chairs um a rug or and or a bean bag to lounge on makes it easier and comfortable for people to gather and and chat. Um, bean bags. I'm not a big fan of bean bags. I had a bean bag bean bag at once at one point in time in my life, and it was overly used. And what happened was when you have a bean bag that is overly used, it tends to start to wear and tear on the bean bag, causing it to get holes or tears and rip, which causes the interior to start to leak out. Um, that in the factor, unless you're, a, unless you're, you have young kids or teenagers coming over with the family, which is fine and dandy. I have no problem with that. I'm, in fact, I look forward to visiting with, um, the younger generation because it makes me feel older, wiser, and more, um, I don't know. I just feel comfortable around. I have a problem with being around people my my age because the younger generation, um, you can give them knowledge and help them learn how to deal with life in general. And then the older generation, being around the older generation, you gain a bit of knowledge and a bit of perspective on what life, how hard life was during their age, during when they were younger. Um, I hear a lot of young, I hear a lot of young people complaining about how hard it is. And then when you give them the imagery of how hard it was in your day and age, they don't feel, sometimes they go, oh, yeah, this is not as hard as that was. This is a whole lot easier. Um, a lot of people my age, sit, we compare, we, we tend to get into a little bit of arguments because like, oh yeah, my, my life was harder because I don't, I, don't, I was, you know, in the mil, I was a military child, blah blah blah, and then I hear my my wife and and her siblings talk about how, well, you were an only child, and we had all these different people living with us at one point in time, and yada yada yada. We, it's, just, it's like, okay, are we trying to argue schematics of whose life was harder, or are we trying to just gain perspective of how another person's life was, who's the same age? So it's one of those kind of like. Hmm, is this a who's got the bigger stick or what type situation? But anyhow, um, get the lighting off the furniture instead of standing lamps or table lamps. Opt for wall or ceiling mounted lighting. This creates an organized, neat look and makes it less likely someone will knock it over. That is true. Uh, I, I don't know how many times um, 
either Jerry or myself or even a visitor has come close to knocking off a table lamp because the table wasn't big enough for all the stuff that was on the table, plus a, per a visitor's drink glass or more than one drink glass on the table or just a factor of maybe a rambunctious child ran into the table and boom, there goes the table lamp. The difficult with, with getting lighting from the ceiling is it's either going to be a chandelier or some kind of light fixture that hangs. So it's like, okay, where can we hang it that's close to a plug that gives us extra lighting? Now, there's a section that we're going to read probably here in a little bit um, about the same thing in the, in the kitchen, how to light up the kitchen. Luckily, the predecessor who owned this house put some nice high hats in various rooms. That's these in the ceiling type lighting fixtures that use the big bulbs. They're called high hats. Um, for those of you who don't know architectural terminology. Um, there's a number of high hat type lighting throughout the house and practically every room, which does give it a lot of light. Um, the kitchen and the living room and certain other rooms that have darker walls or depending on the size of the room, depending on how lit up the room is, um, the gentleman who owned this house, who was an architectural um, engineer, added a whole bunch of extra special lighting in the kitchen to light up various parts of the kitchen. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful for that because the factor it does lot, add a lot of extra light in the kitchen. Um, in the living room, he only did one, he only did two or three high hats, which at certain times of the day don't light up enough of the room. So we have side lamps on our, ta our tabletop lamps. Um, the thing is, if you can't change your, um, like, let's say you can't hang up a chandelier or change your ceiling amount of lighting. Um, the other suggestion she puts on here um, is, um, I don't know, what I, I, she doesn't say it in the living room, but she says it in a couple other different rooms is, if you have to have side table lamps or night or tabletop lamps or something like that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my lips are a little dry today. Um, add brighter bulbs. See what your side table maximum capacity is and add the maximum capacity bulb you can. Some people opt for nowadays. I think yeah. As soon as I'm done reading this, I might stop for the day. Um, <clears throat> Some people opt for um, mo the modern day lights. You can buy special Wi-Fi um, light bulbs or, or whatnot that work with the Alexa system or apps on your phone. Um, and the ones that we have have special features. They're color changing bulbs. They're, um, you can add soft white light, um, bright light, um, you can change the, the lighting depending on how much light you need or how much light you want or setting a mood. Or let's say you're having a party and you have the lights that I like because they change colors and they flicker and whatnot due to the beat of the music, which causes like a disco effect. Um, they're good for parties or for, for people like me who like to sit back, listen to music and have a light show. I'm weird, I know. But, I need chapstick. Do I have any chapstick in here? Yes, I do. Ah, come on. Forgive me, folks, but my lips are very chapped and it's it's causing me issues. Um... combination of seasonal issues and just I have chopped lips at various years most people get it in, in the winter time I get it all year round but anyhow lighting in in any room um yeah I can understand uh, to to keep um table lights um to a minimum because of the danger of knocking them over 
Um, but get yourself some like soft white light bulbs or uh, specialized lights that basically you can change via um, Alexa or an app. So you can, let's say, <clears throat> let's say you don't need a lot of lighting and um, you have everything hooked up to Alexa. Sometimes you can have each lamp dim or turn off via Alexa. A lot of times at nighttime, I don't need light because I'm trying to enjoy a TV show and the light kind of takes away from the TV show. Or sometimes while in bed, Jerry's trying to sleep and I want to sit up and read for a little bit. She can turn off her side lamp, her overhead light, and I can dim mine to like 25% and give me enough light to read without squinting. But anyhow, next one in the living room is... Be daring. Go screen free. No TVs, visible computers, or laptops laid up, laid, laying about. Discreetly position a music screen somewhere and see what your family and friends come up with when there's when they don't have a screen to stare at. If you must leave, if you must have a screen. Consider mounting one with a cover or placing it behind a cabinet door so it doesn't immediately visit immediately visible so it's not immediately visible to the guests. My computer screen is in a cabinet, so I can close that door. Now my TV, I'm pretty sure I can come up with something to block it. So yeah. Sorry if this gets uh, choppy because I just someone just tried to call me and I did not have my phone on. Do not disturb. But anyhow, um, we we're talking about TV screens and computer screens. Basically, what she's suggesting is try to hide your TV screens or your computer monitors or don't leave the, don't have the laptop laying around in the living room area. That way, your guests aren't being disturbed by it or being distract or just sidetracked by it because you want to enjoy their company and having conversations and, and whatnot with them maybe later on in the evening time when you if you have a guest who's staying overnight maybe later in the evening time you know you're trying to wind down for the day and get ready to go to sleep put on you know, ask them if they want to watch a movie or watch something to help them relax and, and calm down from the day. Or just not even have it on. Just see what happens. See if, you know, maybe somebody goes, hey, you know, the game's on. Let's watch football or something like that. Let your guests be the ones who make that decision. Don't, you don't always have to go, hey, you know what? I don't feel like talking. Let's just watch TV. That's rude. Um... I know because sometimes my social, my antisocial anxieties or, or issues um, of wanting to basically not be social because it's like I don't have anything to talk to you about. So why am I going to pay attention to you? Um, not that they come to visit just my wife, but sometimes I just have that like. I'm bored. You guys are talking. I have no interest in the conversation. What can I do? Um I think what I, what's going to happen in, in the future, well, when when Lisa's here, I usually, you know, Lisa and Jerry watch TV. Um, they talk all the time. So it's kind of like one of those, like, yeah, I understand what she's saying. But at the same time, it's kind of like, I don't know, maybe each to their own, depending on the guest, depending on the, the event. Um... Anyhow, here's another one she suggests, and I kind of went, eh, that's going to have to depend on the family. Um, she suggests, place an instrument you play in the living room, a piano, a standing organ, or a guitar, as a recipe for fun. Kids love sitting and plucking out melodies. I don't have a guitar. I don't have a piano. I don't, I don't know anybody, well... There may be some people who have either a, a piano or an organ, maybe even a guitar. And 
if you feel comfortable letting kids play with it, yeah. Put it out in the open. Uh, I know when we were living in New York, in my father-in-law's house before Hurricane Sandy, um, I call it my father-in-law's house even after he passed away because it was his home. Um, for 40, 50 plus years. Um, even after he passed, I, I still felt it was his home because it had a lot of him still out in the open. But I got interested in um, a video game called Rock Band for um, the original Xbox. And we got it. And every so often when, you know, nieces and nephews, mostly nephews, came by to visit, we would play with it. Jerry Ann, myself, my brother-in-law, Robert, um, and one of my nephews would always goof around with it. To encourage group fun, keep a stack of board games or other group activities in a prominent place on a coffee table or shelf. Um, I'm going to stop reading there. Because I got stuff to do around the house. Um, yeah, it's a good idea to to either have board games or other things that a group the the visitors or family members, especially family members and close friends, might want to play. Um, around here, it's like Monopoly, tri uh, trivia, um, quite dominoes, um, maybe a deck of cards for or a deck or two of cards for playing card games. Um, we don't always have it out in the open because of the factor, you know, it's one of those kind of things like, we don't really have a space for it right now. Um, I can think of one or two spaces that I could put it that would be out in the open, but that would mean cleaning up, uh, you know, making, rearranging one or two lo little locations that Jerry's already set up. In fact, Jerry is recently, uh, she had... I think she put out a video last night or early this morning on what our fi our finished living room looks like. Now, there's one or two spots, especially on the couch, that might still look cluttered to some people because it's stuff that Jerry Ann gets into on a regular daily basis. Um, usually, if we have guests, that stuff usually gets moved to a temporary location out of the way so three people can sit on the couch instead of two. Um, we opted to put two throw pillows on the chair, on two chairs, and one throw pillow on one chair, on two other chairs. Um, the reason why I said it yesterday is because we do have two people who visit us, my Aunt Sue and her friend Sharon when, they, when she visits. Sharon doesn't visit as much as, as Jerry Ann would like him. The reason is um, Sharon's allergic to cat hair and she has issues, breathing issues that mom's smoke um, amplifies. So if Sharon visits, it's basically for a very short period of time and usually she's not sleeping here. Unfortunately, Sharon lives all the way in Florida, so I think... The second time Sharon actually visited was for my wife's birthday. And we were thankful that mom opted to go visit friends in Ohio. Um, so we, we, we were, we're working on a lot of stuff, but for the most part, we're happy with the kit, uh, the living room. It is done in a way that I'm comfortable. Yes. The gallery wall might look a little overdone or overbearing to some people, but I've gotten to the point where it's like, no, it doesn't bug me no more. Um, Jerry Ann does want to redo and rearrange that gallery wall. So it's like, okay, we'll see. Um, what was I thinking? What was I saying? Oh, um, but yeah, we are, we, we've finalized the living room. We're done in the living room. Yay. We got one room. 100% done. Today we are going to come in here and start doing some work in here so we can start doing work in other rooms. It's one of those things where we need to do stuff in here to go do stuff in other 
in, a, in our room so we can move some furniture around. So it's one of those, okay, we gotta do certain things in here. Then we gotta go over to this room and do certain things in that room to prep moving furniture and whatnot. So we can come back over here and move this thing to move that thing to move this thing because certain pieces of furniture are getting relocated in different rooms. So that's what we're going to try to work on today. Um, I'm going ho. I'm feeling I'm 100% better compared to what I was when I first woke up with a massive headache. Anyhow, um, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments about this particular video, um, go ahead and place them in the question comment area. And I will try to address them as soon as I get them or as soon as I can. Um, yeah. And if you're a new subscriber and you like the this video and like the other videos that had to do with American Cozy, um, go ahead and address them or not address them. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'm thinking about the questions and comments and addressing those. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and a little bell will pop up. You click on that bell and YouTube will let you know when I have a new video out. So until next time, have a good day. Enjoy. Bye.